Hey guys, welcome back. Day 13 here, we're gonna talk about electron configuration. So in the last video, we went through the first 10 elements and their electron configurations, got core electrons, valence electrons. And in this one, what we're gonna do, are like these first, what, five here, we'll do them together. And then I will do all of them, but my recommendation is for you to try to go on, right? And then work back. All right, look back at the video, you know, so pause me, go on, and uh, try to do it yourself, okay? So sodium, first thing, you know, looking at your periodic table. So you need your periodic table. I'm not going to scroll up and down on the video and get you guys dizzy. I want you guys to have a periodic table next to you, and so you can look at this. And so I'll just verbally talk about what I'm looking at in the periodic table. You look at the periodic table. So for sodium... Right, you got 1s2, 2s2, right? So you got hydrogen, helium, you got lithium, beryllium, you got 2p6, right? That's all the way boron through neon. And then we're in 3s1. So we have our core and our valence. Now the core can be represented as neon and then 3s1. So we are allowed to use neon 3s1. And if you ever need to, you can always put like a little 10 here. It's not official, don't, this is not like the official way to do things. But if you're worried, 10, right? Because sodium's atomic number is 11. So the 10 and the one give you 11 electrons. So you can always double check to make sure that our electron configuration has the appropriate number of electrons. All right, but that's core notation, right? So using the normal gas core is core notation. And as you can see, as we go down the periodic table, the core notation makes sense because we don't have to write a huge chain. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s, and then 3p, and then 4, and on and on and on. All right, orbital notation. So we're just going to do the valence, and the valence is 3s. And so I draw a box for 3s. Okay, and we have, in 3s, we have one electron. And by definition, or by convention, the first electron is up, all right? So by convention, the first electron's up, the second one's down. With the electron being up, ms is plus one half. Let's try that better. Plus one half, there we go. By convention, MS is plus a half because it's up. If it's down, if the arrow were going down, it would be minus one half. So this arrow, arrow that we're going to do in uh, magnesium next will be down. All right, N. N is right there. So N is three. We are in an S orbital, right? And so if you need to, right, you have S, P, D, and F. And for L, that almost looks like an E. L, there we go, right? S, L is zero. P, L is one. D, L is two. Three, L is F. If you need that for right now, all right? And where does that come from? Well, remember the last video, we talked about days, weeks, or days and months, right? If the month is uh, seven, we know what month that is, right? Okay, and everybody knows that's July. So if M is 7, oh, it's July. Okay, same thing here. If L is 1, it's a P orbital. In this case, L is 0, so it's an S orbital. All right, so we have S. Now, M sub L, right? M sub L, if you remember, M sub L goes from negative L to 0 to positive L, right? whatever it is. So in this case, L is 0, so the orbital is zero. And I put an S down, this should be zero. All right, so those are the four quantum numbers. N is three, L is zero, M sub L is zero, M sub S is minus one half. Let's look at magnesium. Noble gas core, so the noble gas of magnesium in the period above is neon, the same. And then it's going to be three S two. And so we're going to have an up 
And then we're going to have a down. And we want that down, that electron. Now, N will be 3 still. S orbital, so L is 0. M sub L, still 0. And now we are down, minus 1 half. Okay. Now, these, this electron right here has those quantum numbers, same as uh, sodium, right? Because think of it this way. Each atom has the same electron seat. What do you want to call it? A theater, a stadium, whatever, right? And it has the same seats. The ground state electron configuration, the lowest energy, it's all the same. It all starts with section 1s, then section 2s, then section 2p, and then section 3s, all right? And we just want to know how many electrons fill in. And they just fill in in order, right? So, like, if you're at a theater and it's front and center stage, right? Or 1s box has two seats. Then the 2s box is right behind them. And there's the 2p box with six seats. And then people just, the electrons just fill in from close to the stage or close to the nucleus in this case, all the way back. All right. So they all have the same like ticket. So you you go to the this theater has a ticket. Well, this, right, the purple electron right here, its ticket is N equals 3, L equals 0, M sub L is 0, and MS is plus a half. This electron has the same section, it's just minus one half. All right, that's kind of how a good way to think of it. Aluminum, let's look at aluminum. Again, the noble gas in the period before is neon. 3s2, and then we jump across, all right, because there's nothing there until we get to aluminum to 3p. And there's one. So I have 3s and 3p, all right? Again, S orbital is one box, right? We talked about this last time. And then P orbital is three boxes, six electrons. All right, so we have up, down, and up. So this electron, N is still three. We're now in a P orbital. So L is no longer zero. L is one, because we're in a P orbital, All right? And then M sub L, it goes negative L, negative 1, 0, and 1. So we are in negative 1. And because we are up, we're plus 1 half. Let's look at phosphorus. Now we're skipping 1. We're skipping silicon. So I'm not doing every element on the periodic table. That would be extremely boring and beating a dead horse. We don't want to do that. So phosphorus still has neon. We're in 3s2. And then if you look, we have 3P3. So we still have 3S. And then we have 3P. And we got up, down, up, up, up. So now we're looking at this electron right here. And N is still 3, right? Because there's N and it's 3. P orbital, L is still 1. Now we are negative 1, 0, 1. So M sub L is 1, and we are still up, so it's plus 1 half. Chlorine. Chlorine. We have neon again, because that's the normal gas in the row above. And then we have 3S2, 3P5. Just count them. Aluminum, silicone, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so valence electrons, 3s and 3p. And how many do we have? We have up, down, and we have up, 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 down, down. So this last one right there. N is 3 still. P is L is 1 because it's P orbital. M sub L, negative 1, 0, 1. So M sub L is 0. And we are down, so it's minus 1 half. So those are the quantum numbers for chlorine. So this is all we're doing.
The next one, argon, right? So note argon, you cannot use argon for argon, right? You can't define argon by argon, right? So its core would actually be still neon, then 3s2, 3p6. Make those a little more even. There we go. 3P. And as you can see, we got up, down, up, 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 down, down. And I'm just doing the last electron. Right? So this last electron, N is still 3. P orbital, so L is 1. It's in the negative 1, 0, 1. It's in the 1 box. And we're minus 1 half because we're down. There we go. All right. That's it. Now we're going to calcium. So now in calcium, we can actually use argon for calcium. Because calcium's noble gas core is argon. And then it is 4S2. So in 4S, we have up, down. All right. And so in 4s, we want the second electron placed. So n is 4. Right now, if n is 4, l can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. But in this case, because we are in an s orbital, we know l is 0. And if l is 0, m sub l has to be 0. And since we're down, m sub s is negative 1 half. Titanium. Highlight it there, right? There is a curveball in the electron configuration of the table. So you still use argon as a noble gas core. And it's still 4s2. Then the curve is that it becomes 3d. It becomes 3d. So it's 4s, 3d. The d's are off by one, right? And this is not something that in... The early 1900s Schrodinger, so 100 years ago, he wasn't sitting there like, you know what, I'm going to make this equation so that it confused all the people coming after me to try to understand this. That's not what he did, all right? This is how the math works, all right? It's 3D1. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's 3D2. 3D2. 4S2, 3D2. I'll do 3D here, just because I know it says we're balanced electrons, but... We'll do 3D. All right, just for the quantum number's sake. Because 4S2, right, this electron, like the last electron in S is the same as this one, which is here. This electron, right, for uh, the first electron is still 4, 0, 0, but it's positive one half. So now we're going to do D. And we have 2 and D, so up, up. So this electron right here. N is 3. L, it's a D orbital. Since it's a D orbital, L is 2. And we go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So M sub L is negative 1. And we are up, so it's positive 1 half. Cobalt. Let's try cobalt. Still argon. All right, it's still argon. It's still 4S2. And then 3D again, but count them over for cobalt. 3D looks like it's 7. So we'll do 3D and we'll do 7 electrons. So we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? All up first, that's Hun's rule. 6 and 7. So that blue one. Right there. So N is still 3. D orbital is L is 2. We are at negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So we are at negative 1, and we are down, so we're minus 1 half. Now, the reason I did titanium and cobalt, this D orbital is the same orbital on, on how we're doing electron configurations here. And so they have 3, 3, 2, 2. 
negative one, negative one. The difference is the electron spin. So one's up, one down. That's it. All right. So with the Ds, we're offset by one. Bromine. What happens here? So bromine, we still have argon. Then it's 4s2, 3d10, 4p. And you count them over, and it's 4p5. So we got 3, no, not 3, 4s, one box, and 4p are three boxes. And we have two electrons in 4s, up, down, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this electron right here. N. N looks like it to be 4. P orbital. So L is 1. M sub L. Negative 1, 0, 1. So we are in the middle, 0. And MS, we are down. So it's minus 1 half. I hope you're seeing the pattern. Again, you can do this and you can you feel free to do these because all this electron configuration is like known, right? This is not the ground state electron configuration. So if you can go in between some of the elements we missed and see if you can do them. You feel, feel free to do that. Um, but we're going to keep going on here because we've got a lot. Yttrium. So yttrium, I skipped again. Right? So yttrium is now in period five. So noble gas, I can use krypton, which is the noble gas in the row above, period above, 5s2, then it's 4d, and yttrium is the first one. So I know it says, again, noble gas, or the, uh, not noble gas, the, uh, whew, the electron configuration for uh, valence electrons for this orbital. We'll just do 4d for the, uh, practice and we have one in 4d and so that electron n is four because right there d orbital so l is two it goes negative two negative one zero one two for m sub s and so we are in negative two and since we're up plus one half all right so that's yttrium we're skipping all the way over to indium indium Still krypton, 5s2, 4d10, 5p1. All right, so we have 5s and 5p. Okay, and so we have up, down, and then up. So right here, this guy. N is 5. P orbital. So it means L is 1. Negative 1, 0, 1. So M sub L is negative 1. And we are up. So we are plus 1 half. That's all we're doing. All right. So hopefully you're seeing the pattern. And if you, again, if you need to meet with me, feel free. All right. Xenon. 54 electrons. We have krypton still, 5s2, 4d10, 5p6. So 5s and 5p. And we have up, down, up, 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 down, down, and down. That one. N, 5, P orbital, L is 1, M sub L, negative 1, 0, 1, plus 1, and we are down, so minus 1 half. And that is that. Now we can skip over to barium, which is in period 6. And we get to use xenon for this. So xenon, 6s2. 6s, one box, and we have up, down. And so the last electron there, n is 6, s orbital, s orbital, l is 0. So then m sub l has to be 0, right? These are zeros. And then we are down, 
Second electron, minus one half for the spin. Lanthanum. All right, so now we're about ready to have the second curveball, but lanthanum's not there yet. We're getting there, though. Lanthanum is still a xenon. 6s2, 5d1. So if we do 5d real quick, there's 1 in 5d, so that means n is 5, d orbital, l is 2, get negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, so m sub l is negative 2, we're up, plus 1 half. Cerium, number 58. Here is curveball number 2. We have xenon. Then we have 6s2. Five D one for F one. All right. The Fs are off by two. All right. And so even though we are in period six, the Fs are down two. So it's six S, five D, four F. That's just something we're gonna know. All right. And so, just for fun, we'll do the four Fs here. And we have one in there. So, N is four. L is three, because we're in an F orbital. We go negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. And so, M sub L is negative three, and we are plus one half. All right. Now, I'm a little out of order here. I fixed it, but it didn't get to this. So we're going to skip down to GD, Godolium, number 64. And so down here, GD, right, we have Xenon still. Right? Okay. And we have 6S2. 5D1, 4F7. So if we do the 4F again, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this electron, N is 4, L is... 3, F orbital, M sub L, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. We're in 3, and we are up, so we are plus 1 half. The next one I want to do would be lutetium, L-U. So what I'm doing, so cerium is number 58. Then... Um, Gondolium is 64. Lutetium would be 71. And then tungsten is 74. Lead is 82. And uranium is 92. Those are our atomic numbers. And so I did switch this. It didn't get to, like the updated sheet would be in order. We could just do it not in order and that's fine. So we're going to do lutetium. And if you look, not, yeah, lutetium, which is 71. And that's all the way at the end of the F block down there. And so we still have xenon. And then we have 6s2, 5d1, 4f14. All right, you got to count them all, and there's 14 down there. And so if we do the 4f for fun. A lot in here. Up, 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 up. That's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 
Whew. And so N, 4, because we're in 4F. L is 3, because we're in F orbital. And we are in 3 for M sub L, and we are down, so we're minus 1 half. Now we'll jump to 74. All right. And so I does not matter necessarily how you do this. I'm going to do it two different ways. All right. We're still with the xenon. 6s2. It's 5d and then 4f14. But it's 5d, not 1, but it's 5d4, right? Now, some books will show it to you this way. Xe uh, 4f14. Right, 6s2, 5d4. They might do it that way. They might have 6s2, then 4f14, and then 5d4. It, I'm okay no matter how you do it. Um, if I see it, I understand it. But let's look at the 5d real quick. We have 4 and 5d, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this one. N is 5, because we're in, all right, 5, N equals 5. D is L equals 2. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. We are in ML1, and MS is up. Lead. And so lead, xenon, 6s2, 5d10, right, 4f14, and 5, not 5, 6, 6p2. All right, a lot of times when you look this up, they'll leave out the d's and the f's because they're, they're technically not core, right? By definition, the core is the xenon. However, the D's and F's are not going to be in lead's behavior of bonding, especially in Chem 1. Can you take those electrons away? Of course. All right? But we're not going to take them away. Now, there's something called stripping order. A lot of times you'll see this written as 4F14, because it's the lowest energy, and then 5D10, and then 6S2, and then 6P2. And we have in here up, down, up, up. And I want this electron. So N would be 6, P orbital, L is 1, M sub L, 0, because we're in the middle, and MS is up, plus 1 half. Now, I like to show my classes right now about lead and I always ask the, the seated classes what do you think lead just leads charges are right there's two charges lead likes to take so when we warm up group 14 that charge if you remember is we say plus or minus four when we're going through right group one's plus one two's plus two 13's plus three 14 is plus or minus four Right. Well, if lead is in group 14, is it going to be plus or minus 4? Well, what do you think lead will be? And what can happen, because this is what we call the stripping order, we can lose the P's first. They come off first. So if these come out first, we lose two electrons, lead would be plus 2. And then if we lose those two electrons right here, lead could be plus 4. So lead likes to be plus 2 and plus 4. And so we're going to use, this is one of the things about using electronic configuration, we can actually um, utilize the electronic configuration to predict what the electrons are going to, uh, going to leave and the charges of the metals and nonmetals. We can, uh, again, we did that in that, uh, the previous video where we, we've, fluorine's minus one, it looks like neon, all right? So if lead is plus four, it doesn't look exactly like a xenon, but those Full F and full D orbitals are very stable, so it's very close to looking like xenon. All right. Last one. All right. Last one. And that would be uranium. So uranium is in the 
actinide series, which is in technically period seven. And so we can use radon for our normal gas at 7s2, and then you hit 6d1, and you got 5f, and you count them over three. Let's just, just have fun with 5f. There's three of them in here. One, two, and three. So that last electron right here, N is five. F orbital, L is three. M sub L, negative three, negative two, negative one. And we are up. Hopefully, you're getting the patterns, all right? So that is a lot of electron configuration. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.